What's going on guys, it's the Bulls and the Bears here with a weekly recap video with the wheel strategy. As you may have heard in my last video, I said I was going to be away all weekend, so I wasn't able to make videos until, well, now. So this will probably be uploaded either really late Sunday or early Monday morning. So no game plan video, I didn't have time, I haven't even looked at anything, never mind make a video on it. But I will squeeze in a recap video for you guys to watch before my midweek update coming up next week. Here is Spy obviously had a pretty bad week we were this is a weekly chart we moved lower 3.35 percent this is something i said to watch out for this overarching trend with the orange lines here from the all-time highs to way back here on the bottom side we hit it for the fourth time last week we closed the week pretty much rejecting at that level and i said we could be in for a move lower just based on the trend alone and well that's what we got and Friday was pretty rough too. We thought maybe PPI, is that what it was? Or, yeah, PPI. We thought maybe that could be a saving grace. If it came in better than expected, maybe we'd actually kind of counteract that trend and possibly push up maybe to 400 or just have a, a bounce in, on the week. But it came in a little hotter than expected. Marcus didn't really like it. Uh, we did try to push up. Here's the five minute chart on SPY. We did gap down a little bit. We tried to push up. And then we trickled lower down to about the open price. And then all hell broke loose. Bam. Down to 393. Just about. A nasty close on Friday. Uh, just a nasty finish of the week overall. I mean, this is a pretty strong red candle on the weekly chart. And as the market goes, so do the names within the market. And the names that I played Cash Secured puts on. And we're going to get into that right now. So... Well, before I do, I, I will, I'll say that I expect SPY to kind of head towards the bottom line right here, this orange line. I don't see any reason for this to bottom out sooner and then push up and maybe break out or anything. Maybe, at best, a retest to like 400, but I think the PPI data was our best chance to retest that. And since it failed, I think we're just going to start heading lower to this trend line, which doesn't bode well for the wheel strategy because whether we're short puts or long shares... Any moves to the downside hurt us. So let's get into some of the positions that I played. We'll start with the good ones. We're going to start with Comcast. Go to the daily chart here. So Comcast, I sold one put for 21 cents at the 34 strike, indicated by the yellow line. I sold this one on Tuesday. This was after we had a sell-off on Monday. So instead of selling a put like somewhere here on Monday, I was able to sell it down here lower on Tuesday and therefore was able to get a favorable strike at some decent support and further um, thir further down, which would mean the stock would have to be a little bit extended in order for me to actually get a sign, which puts the odds in my favor. And sure enough, it ended up working out in my favor. It did start to pop up. It actually had a better end to the week than the market did. SPY closed red while Comcast pushed up. And if I look at the weekly chart... It looks like it was a bit of a doji week with a low, nice lower wick. So Comcast fared better than SPY did. And um, I was able to close this early on Friday or Thursday afternoon, I forget, um, for two cents. So I profited $19, sold it for 21 and I bought it back for two. So Comcast is done. I'll get rid of that on my list. DocuSign is another. I posted a short video showing um, how it reacts to earnings as soon as, literally as soon, the millisecond earnings the earnings is a released and available to the market the stock skyrockets or just reacts you know like before anyone could even read what the headline says before you could even see the word beats or misses or see exactly what the year-over-year -year comparison is or what the guidance will be it's immediately reacting because that's just how computers rule the market they just look for the headline numbers maybe they have a specific number they want to see the eps greater than or revenue greater than or maybe they just look for the word b or miss and react on that it's crazy stuff uh check it out if you haven't already it's in my shorts videos but docusign had earnings and it ripped up which was nice because i sold a put at the crap i don't even have it anymore oh i do it's just off the screen the the 33 strike way down here 33 i sold one put for 30 cents you know iv was high because of earnings so i was able to get a pretty far out of the money strike for decent premium met my 30% annualized return requirement and I let it expire worthless because this didn't earnings didn't happen and I wasn't able to react to the earnings until Friday. So really it was it was either going to be all or nothing. 
And since Friday opened and it was way up, there was no need to close it early. I was just going to let it expire. Worthless. And I did, and I captured all of the premium, which amounted to a $30 profit on the name. So that's it for profits. That ends up being $49 in realized profits. The rest of my potential profits, well, I'm not able to realize them because I took the assignment on all of them. I didn't even roll them either. I just straight up took the assignment. If they were greatly underwater, then I'd look to roll it, get a little bit of a better cost basis. But since these names are somewhat close to my assignment price, my cost basis, uh, I'm just gonna let it roll, or I should say let it ride and sell calls first thing on Monday because the price is close enough to my cost basis to get good premium on the calls. At least they should be. Uh, we'll start with Kohl's. What an absolutely dreadful week on Kohl's. Holy cow. I thought, you know, this was a good level to play. Decent support when you look back. Let me adjust the chart. There we go. Um, you know, in the middle of this, this big channel, maybe I can draw. Here we go. So if I draw like a channel here, you can see, boom, pretty much in the middle, actually a little bit lower than the midpoint of this big channel that has been in, this big range that's been in since July. So, you know, more, more support than resistance, but we cut right through it. We sold all the way down to $26. We opened at 31, dropped $5 this week. Here's the weekly chart. We dropped 16%. Was not expecting that whatsoever. Sure, they had a dividend. Um, the ex-dividend date was this week of 50 cents, so you can expect the stock to drop at least 50 cents, uh, which is fine. 50 cents, I'll let that happen, but it dropped $5, so 10 times as much as the dividend amount. Dropped 16%, holy cow. So yeah, that was pretty devastating. I took the assignment and I sold two puts. I didn't take it light on Kohl's. I went pretty much in my full allotment of puts. So now I'm going to have 200 shares at 2782 and I'm not really going to be able to add to it because it's just about uh, my full allocation per name. Uh, I don't want to go any more than a quarter of my account in a single name. And if I add any more puts or any, if I add an additional, additional 100 shares, it's going to be beyond 25%. So I'm pretty much done with Kohl's. It's just managing these 200, these 200 shares. So I, I sold a put at 28, collected 18 cents premium. So that reduces my cost basis to 27.82. Go to the 15 minute chart, you can see it spaced out a little more. So I'm gonna leave both lines on the chart just so it's clear where I got assigned versus where my shares are, like where my break even is, my adjusted cost basis, same thing. Um, so I'm about $1.40 underwater. I do think I can still get a good premium for calls above my cost basis, even though it is underwater by, uh, what's that? Yeah, $1.40. Um, it's approaching some support. It's approaching oversold on the RSI. So hopefully we'll see a little bit of a bottom soon. In the end, I, I still am favorable on the name long term. I think it's going to benefit from this rocky economy. It's a discount retailer after all. People will probably trade lower to stores like Kohl's and even TJ Maxx and stuff like that um, just to get those better deals, better uh, discounted items because people are going to be pinching their pennies. So and it's at a decent area too. I played Coles once upon a time. Let's see in my my covered call, my covered stock graveyard. So I played Coles a little while ago, earlier this year, and during the summer. I got assigned at thirty dollars. I played Coles way way back here. I got assigned at thirty. Now I'm in at, at twenty eight. So even at an even better price for a uh, for an investment that could be long term, but could only be a couple weeks. We'll see what happens, but. And at the end of the day, I'm happy being in the name at this price. I'm just a little blown away of how severe of a red week it had. Every single day, just new lows, straight down, crazy stuff. VF Corp, this is one I also did that also had a nasty week. It gapped down quite a bit on Monday, so I was able to get a lower strike than I originally planned on the, my weekend video. I think I was looking at the 31 strike, uh, but because it gapped down to 31, I sold the 29 strike. And it gapped down because of some fundamental news about, um, I think they reduced their outlook for next year and their co-CEO stepped down. So some management issues, some guidance issues, it dropped 7% pre-market. And it kind of followed through the rest of the week. It sold off hard on Monday, trickled down Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, gapped down on Friday, had a little bit of a green day. 
but not much. Still closed lower than the day before. So VF Corpse is at 28.20. I sold a put at 29. I got 20 cents for it. And my adjusted cost basis is 28.80. So I'm down 60 cents on this position right now. On Monday, I'll have 100 shares at 28.80. And right now that means I'm down 60 cents, which isn't that much. So I'm, I'm happy with this. I think it's a good price overall. If I zoom out, I have this demand zone drawn here from the 28 to $26 range, and we're in it right now. We're towards the top of it, but we're still in this support zone, this demand zone that I drew out. That I drew out. And if I zoom out a bit, five-year look, you can see we haven't even been down here. When was the last time we were down here? 2011. So I don't know. I think this is a great deal, personally. Um, last time we were down here, we, we found some support. So maybe there might be some consolidating down here for a little while, but we're just going to sell calls on it. And long term, just like all the other names, I'm favorable on it. I think this is a good value for it. Pays dividends, all that stuff. This also had the ex-dividend date this week. I think that's that's why I gapped down on Friday by uh, the dividend, which was 51 cents. So yeah, gapped down and it stayed down there for the most part. But yeah, not, not too far off on that one, not too far underwater. I'll be looking to sell a covered call on that one. Sold one put, got 100 shares. I could sell another put and get another 100 shares because it is a cheap enough stock. I could afford another 100 shares and it still be within my 25% portfolio allocation. So if it does get worse, I can afford to average down and sell another put against it. But in the meantime, I will look to sell calls first thing on Monday. Suncor is the third one. Sold the put at 30.50. And it's at 29.60. Here's the daily chart. A rough week for Suncor as well. It actually capped up on Monday, looking great. And then it tanked. Three, five red days in a row. I still thought it was a nice support area to sell a put on. It just cut right through it. It's actually oversold on the daily chart. So maybe we'll find some support coming soon or a bounce coming soon. I mean, if you look at this region right here, definitely some support. You see those lower wicks. If you carry it over to over here on the right, it's right in that range. So hopefully we find some support very soon, like as little as soon as next week. Otherwise, we might fill this little gap and go down to 28, 27. Um, this, this is tied to energy. So even if the market goes down, like like SPY, if oil goes up and there's something, uh, energy catalyst, whether it's with Russia or whatnot, and oil starts going up, well, Suncor can benefit even if SPY is going down. So this is... Uh, there's, a, there's another out to it. The market could do well or energy could do well, independent of the market. So we'll have to see what happens. It could also do worse. Energy could also get worse and this gets lower. So zooming in a little bit, I sold the put at 30.50. I got 20 cents for it. So now my adjusted cost basis on 100 shares is 30.30. 30 $30.30 and it sits at 29.60. So I'm down 70 cents on this position. So it'd be $70 if it opens at this price tomorrow. But just like VF Corp, if I need to sell another put to rescue my cost basis, if this thing really does tank and maybe I can sell, maybe I can average another 100 shares at like 26, 25 or something, like if it gets that dramatic, then I can be, I can do that because I have the, the portfolio size for it. I'm only in 100 shares at $30. I could go up to 200 shares, no problem. So that's always there in my back pocket on pretty much all of these names, except Kohl's because Kohl's is already at 200 shares. Same thing with ZIM too, which we'll get to. Corterra is the last one that I played this week, just like Suncor, because this is an energy name as well. It uh, it tanked hard. I, I sold a nice put at, nice, at a nice support level. I actually sold this one on Tuesday after it sold off hard on Monday. So it already sold off hard on Monday and then I sold a put. So I was able to get that benefit of that lower price before I sold the put. So I was able to get a lower strike than I would have on Monday, but it still got assigned. It dropped all the way to 24.48. I got assigned to 25. I sold it for 15 cents, which means my adjusted cost basis is 24.85. So I'm down about 50 cents on the position, not much. Again, I should be able to sell a covered call on this thing right away. Um, and it's a really cheap price stock. So just like the others, if I need to sell another put lower, and get a better average and get 200 shares, I can do that. Now, I can't do that on all of these names because I'm in five positions. I can really only have four positions with 200 shares each. So so I could try to average down on two of these names, whether it be VF Corp, Suncor Energy, or Corterra, but not all three of them. 
but I could do two of them. We'll have to, we'll just have to see how they all play out, and if uh, one gets severely worse than the others, then uh, then we'll we'll uh, try to get that average down by selling some puts, just like I did with ZIM, which we will get to right now. ZIM is killing me. It is following a pattern of X dividend and sell off, X dividend and sell off, because this is what happened the last dividend in uh, the summer gap down on that dividend and then just completely sold off and then we finally had another dividend a quarter later had that gap down and then we're just selling off so it's like people are buying the shares getting that dividend and dumping them not that they're making ahead not that they're getting ahead with that because the dividend causes the stock to drop and therefore they're losing any type of benefit by selling the next day i don't think that's really the cause of it i think it's just fundamentally the, the shipping industry isn't really looking that great so like shipping cargo and whatnot why it waits for the dividend before it actually really tanks i'm not sure maybe it does have to do with people collecting that dividend and then dumping the shares just to get that dividend first i don't know exactly but not doing well at 1850 i'm assigned or i have 200 shares at 2671 that's my break even that's my adjusted cost basis you can see the yellow lines that's where I got my puts. I originally got assigned way up here at 37.50. I just recently got assigned down here at 21. My adjusted cost basis after the put premium, call premium, dividends, all that stuff. My cost basis is down here at 26.71. But although that's that's much better than way up here at 37.50, I'm still down quite a bit, like six dollars per share on 200 shares. So not fun there. But overall. I'm pretty content on my cost basis on my shares at 2671 considering where this thing has been throughout its life cycle as high as $90 per share having shares at 2671 I think that's a pretty good value for the long term so it might we might have to stick around with this and wait for you know fundamentals with shipping and whatnot to turn around in the economy and the global economy but and that might take some time but overall I do think it will bounce back and I don't have any margin in this thing. So I can hold this as long as I want and I'll collect those juicy dividends in the meantime. I just collected $295 on this last dividend, which helped bring down my cost basis. So that was cool. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it's been getting killed. So yeah, we'll see if there's a turnaround, but that's why I try to just keep my positions at no more than 25% of my account. That way, even if one position is just a struggle the whole time, like ZIM has been, for months, I can still play the wheel on a bunch of other names and just let this one marinate on the back burner. So that's that's why you do that. You have that diversification there. So that's where I stand right now. Made $49 on the week and realized profits with DocuSign and Comcast. And then I got assigned on four positions. I think that's the most I've ever been assigned on at once. So but they're not greatly underwater. So I, I'm actually okay with where I am right now with those positions. Look to sell calls on all four of them on monday lower that cost basis and see if uh, we can maybe get assigned as early as next week we'll see but stay tuned for that midweek update video where i will go over that and let you guys know where i stand where i sold cover calls if i was able to sell cover calls at all and uh, how that goes i probably won't even be looking to open new positions because i'm already in five there's no need to get into more if i'm already in five positions i'll just look to uh sell covered calls and then if some things get really bad use the remaining buying power to save some of these positions and lower that average so that's it guys that's where i stand right now thank you all for watching if you enjoyed hit the like button subscribe for more content and i'll see you all next time